Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com. And you know what, usually the worst things that happen in a comics book plot, they're usually impossible to miss. Likely because they're fat, they're brutal murders, savage injuries, or sometimes even the world just simply flat out ending. These events, well they're iconic, they're unforgettable, and they're arguably the moments that stay with fans the longest, only narrowly beat in this regard by some of maybe the more heartwarming stuff. But you know what, the focus on these epic occasions means that you sometimes don't notice smaller moments, or things that aren't outright explicitly stated in the issue itself, but rather left for you to dwell on when the idea pops into your head in the middle of the night. And you know what, we comic fans are on the large a pretty inquisitive bunch, meaning that if there is a nightmarish way to interpret something, someone will bring it up at some point. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horrifying comic implications. Number 10. Superheroes have no licensing control. Anyone who's seen the Canon Gotham restaurant Bat Burger has likely laughed their asses off about it, especially when you see none other than Bruce Wayne visit it with his motley crew of sidekicks. However, it does raise one very clear point. Superheroes have little to no control over how their likeness is used, or the Dark Knight definitely wouldn't have a McDonald's-esque restaurant created in his image. This also raises some legitimately awful but also legitimately hilarious questions about how seriously the people of Gotham take figures like the Joker and the rest of the city's rogue gallery. Sure, they all know not to mess with them, but the fact that they'll all eat jokerized fries or riddle me fish while doing so suggests that the civilians of Gotham have become possibly a little too adjusted to the whole living in a city teeming with terrifying murderous supervillains thing. Number 9. Santa is real and quite possibly awful. As much as we all had our tiny hearts broken by the discovery that Father Christmas isn't real, spoiler alert, at some point in our lives, there is actually some good news. Santa, in comic books, is very real. With appearances from the figure in both Marvel and DC, it seems clear that he exists in the vast majority of comic universes, which raises some potentially worrying concepts, because that might make him a superhuman, presuming that he can travel as fast as he'd have to in order to drop off every single Christmas present. Or at the very least, he'd be some sort of magical figure of some kind. And this means that he could have been a superhero, but opted to simply not help people and instead give them presents once a year. Now this is all well and good, not everyone has to be a hero just because they could be, but it does mean that every time there's been a world-ending threat, Father Christmas hasn't even bothered to help. Given that Christmas can't happen if the world is destroyed, or the universe for that matter, you'd really think that this speedster would help out his fellow man, but it seems that he'd rather kick back and let us all die if it came to it. Number 8. There may have been more than one Harley Quinn. Death of the Family is full of mind games, as the Joker, fresh off the block and psyched up after having just cut off his own face, tortures not only the assorted Bat Clan, but also his former sidekick and girlfriend, Harley Quinn. Only it's revealed that she may have not been the only one. In an especially nasty twist, the Clown Prince of Crime reveals the bodies of several skeletons, all wearing costumes that look like different revamps of Harley's own. To to confirm what this makes us suspect, Joker tells her that she wasn't the first Harley and that she won't be the last, raising the very real possibility that he has killed a series of other women that have had the moniker too. Number 7. Mentally ill people are exiled in space. Rocket Raccoon, while being a precious fluffy creature that you just want to pet and feed blueberries to, is at the same time a dangerous entity who deserves to be treated with respect and maybe a little bit of fear since you definitely don't want to get on his bad side. He's gruff, angry, and knows how to use more weaponry than hopefully will ever exist in the real world. Yeah, you see, the planet that Rocket originates from, the Half World, was actually populated by a race of humanoid aliens who sought to treat those with mental illness among them by making them robotic butlers and cutesy talking animal carers and then ditching them on said planet. It's undeniably an unusual choice because here on Earth if you saw a talking animal you wouldn't feel especially secure in your sanity. Similarly, if you're dealing with mental health troubles, being left alone on a planet isn't exactly a solid method to help you. The implications of this, as you may have guessed, are deeply, deeply worrying. Number 6. The Lizard is maybe better off uncured. 
The story of Kurt Connors is a tragic one to say the least. A genius scientific mind, Kurt would see his life ruined by his own technical ability, as the serum that he developed to heal the human body would ultimately heal him and then turn him into a huge bloodthirsty creature, henceforth known as the Lizard. Now, while folk have wanted to cure the Lizard and free him from his suffering, it's a wide consensus among Spidey fans that this actually would now only be worse for poor Dr. Connors. But why is that? Well, it's partially because of what we've been shown in the comics, in that when Folk cure Kurt's condition, he's shown to be absolutely broken, with the lizard persona having totally taken over even when his body itself is cured. On another level, though, there's reason to believe that it would go poorly even if you could bring him back around. This is namely because of his son Billy, who died by being eaten by his monstrous old man, and these memories are likely to be decidedly unpleasant for Connors to recall. Even now, when it wouldn't suck so much because the jackal brought Billy back, it did only mean that he had to process that he ate his son and then, when his son was brought back to him, saw him infected with the same thing that made the poor guy into the lizard in the first place. Number 5. That Joker Knows That Batman Is Bruce Wayne this one is perhaps the most well-known in terms of strange comic facts, as many comics suggest, or downright just out-and-out out say, that the Clown Prince of Crime is aware of the fact that Bruce Wayne and Batman are one and the same. Interestingly, some of these comics try to imply that there's no danger from the Joker knowing this information, as the villain is just not interested in Bruce Wayne or his Kevlar Cloud counterpart. Which, for the record, is complete hogwash, by the way, especially since we see him use a knowledge of all of the Bat Kid's different pasts in the Death of the Family series. Now, forget the fact that the Joker is a psychopath and relentlessly capable of providing unique tortures to people. He also clearly knows how to use Batman's secret identity to make people around him hurt, and yet, this is kind of glossed over for the majority of time. Why Bats hasn't let every single person he knows in on this particular piece of gossip, since it very much applies to them and could equal the difference between life and death, no one knows. Maybe he's embarrassed. It's actually unclear completely. Number 4. The Tales Doll it might seem a little unusual that the Sonic comic series has a nightmarish implication behind it, but it's worth considering two things. One, the comic series is way darker, and two, the idea of turning sweet animals into robots is pretty hellish whatever way you cut it. But there's a special hellish spot reserved for the Tails doll, which is infamous amongst basically anyone who's ever seen it because it is every nightmare ever, just please stop looking at it. But of course, in its regular form, it just looks like a plush of Sonic's best friend and constant sidekick. And this is where things get really concerning, because there's little other reason for this murderous robot to look innocent other than it being intended as a sleeper agent, picked up by some innocent kid or person who thought it looked sweet, only for it to either kill them and their friends and family, or capture them to be painfully turned into robots. There's really no good option either way. Number 3. Thanos Chose Regular Humans To Pick On now, it's not exactly a secret that Thanos hates most living creatures, for reasons varying between pragmatic but awful to absolutely surreal. It does seem, though, that he has a special corner of his heart reserved for hating humans, as we all learn in Thanos Annual Number 1 that the Mad Titan appears to pick random people and then just pick on them from the moment that they're born to the moment that they die. We see this through David, an unfortunate victim of these circumstances, who is constantly sabotaged by Thanos at every waking turn, with the villain appearing on his birthday every year to just do something nasty and mean. This ranges from, well, pretty weird stuff like ruining David's relationship with his girlfriend by sending her a nasty text and stealing his blanket when he's asleep, to burning down the grad school that he got into and poisoning all of his friends at his 21st birthday party. And the most messed up part about this is that it doesn't seem to be for any reason. He's just a really, really awful guy, even by regular Marvel villain standards. Number 2. Batman is an unkillable spirit of justice now, we all know that Batman is more or less impervious to death in the comics, because he's simply too good and too beloved a character for DC to ever let him go, let alone the fact that the man simply plans for way too many scenarios that he ever might be killed in to actually ever be killed from. But it's suggested that it's actually a bit more serious. In Neil Gaiman's Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader, here the implication is, is that while Bruce Wayne himself is capable of passing away, the figure of Batman will be reborn, and not in a metaphorical sense either, in a very literal sense. I'm talking about reincarnation, baby. 
Now this is cool as hell because on one hand, infinite Batman, but on the other hand, there is a striking suggestion that Bruce did not opt in to be Batman, but was rather chosen by fate to do a job that would ruin his entire life and eventually lead to his death. It's uh, definitely a little less fun to be Batman this way, it would seem. And number one, Killer Croc's genitals. Right, uh, okay, yeah, you, you might have known this was coming based on the thumbnail, let's talk about Killer Croc's genitals. Now, as you know from either reading the comics, watching the Suicide Squad film, or just reading his name and guessing, Killer Croc is a man who has a disease that slowly makes him more and more like a crocodile. Now, since this has given him a crocodile tail, razor-sharp crocodile teeth and scales, it's fair to say that it's been a full-body transformation, which implies heavily that Wayland's junk has also seen the effects of this unusual, almost sci-fi condition. And this is where you have to unfortunately learn these two facts. That an alligator has a permanently erect penis, and a crocodile has a setup that can retract inside itself. Look, I didn't want to know this either, but there we go. Either way, Jones is in for a kind of weird ride in terms of his changing circumstances, and after you receive this information, you can probably understand why he seems to be quite angry. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 horrifying comic implications. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter, at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.